This is part two in a three-part series on integrating quotients. If you haven't seen part one yet, check out the link in the description, or you might find a link popping up in the upper right-hand corner. In this video, we will review integrating quotients by comparing sets of problems that are very similar to each other. This way we can see how small changes in the integral result in changes in the final answer. In set five, we will consider a variety of integrals that have square roots in the denominator. For part A, we have to decide whether to use u substitution right away or will we involve inverse trig rules. It's all about the degree of the numerator versus the degree of the denominator. If the degree of the denominator wins by two or more, then we know we will use inverse trig rules. And that's the case here. The degree of the numerator is zero and the degree of the denominator is two. So the denominator wins by two. So let's look at our inverse trig rules. These are the three inverse trig rules that you need to memorize. Which one will we use for this problem? Let's see, we have the square root and we have the constant minus the variable. Let's look again. So obviously arctangent is out because it doesn't have the square root. And uh, it looks like arc sine is the one to use because that's the one where we have the constant minus the variable. This is a perfect match for the rule where the a value is equal to 10. We know this because the a value will be the square root of this constant. So let's go ahead and use the rule to integrate. Notice that the arc sine rule is the only one that does not have one over a in the front. So we just go straight to arc sine u over a, which in this case will just be x over 10 plus c. So that's the final answer. In part b, we have this x in the numerator, whereas in part a, it was a 1. That's the only change, but it changes our entire strategy because now the degree of the numerator is 1, while the degree of the denominator is 2. Since the degree of the denominator wins by exactly 1, that signals us to use u substitution immediately. Let's let u equal everything under the radical. So u equals 100 minus x squared. In that case, u prime will equal negative 2x. If we do this substitution, we will have x over the square root of u. And instead of dx, we will write du over u prime, which is negative 2x. We see that we have an x in the numerator and in the denominator. The the negative 2 in the denominator can be brought out front as a negative 1 half. So now we have this, but I would rather write this as u to the negative 1 half power, which is the same thing. So I'm going to do that to make it more clear how to perform the power rule of integration. So I'm going to put u, and I need to increase this exponent by 1. So I'm adding 2 over 2, which makes this a positive 1 half power. Then I divide by my new exponent. Dividing by 1 half is the same as multiplying by 2. So don't forget that we still have the negative 1 half out in the front, and don't forget the constant of integration. These 2's will cancel each other out, so we will end up with negative u to the one-half power plus c. But we know that u is 100 minus x squared. And if we wanted to, we could put the square root back into the problem. So this would be the final answer. For part c, the one change is that the x squared has become x to the fourth power. Everything else is the same. How will that change our strategy? Let's look at the degrees. In the numerator, we have degree 1. In the denominator, we have degree 4. Notice that the degree of the denominator wins by 2 or more. 
Therefore, we will use inverse trig rules. Which one will it be? It looks like we will be using the arcsine rule again because we still have a constant minus the variable, and that's what we see in the arcsine rule. However, the rule has u squared, and here we have x to the fourth power. So we need to rewrite this as something squared. If we want something squared, and it has to be equal to x to the fourth power, this must be x squared. When you raise a power to a power, you multiply, so this would give you x to the fourth power. So we see that u squared is now x squared squared which tells us that u must be x squared. That means that u prime is 2x. Let's do that substitution. Instead of dx, we need to write du over u prime, which is 2x. We notice that we have an x in the numerator and in the denominator, so these will cancel out. The 2 in the denominator can be brought out in the front as one half. So we have one half of the integral of one over the square root of 100 minus u squared du. This is a perfect match for the rule, but notice that a is 10 because a will always be the square root of this constant. So let's go ahead and use this rule to integrate. Remember that there is no 1 over a in the front of this rule. This is the only one that doesn't have it. So we begin by writing arc sine and uh, u over a. But u is x squared, so let's go ahead and write x squared over 10 plus c. But don't forget that we have this 1 half that was already sitting there in the front, and we will bring that down. So here's the final answer for part C. This problem is a little bit tricky because at first glance, it looks like the degree of the denominator wins by exactly one, which would indicate that we should do some U substitution. However, if you do the distributive property with this radical X, uh, right away you see that this is actually the square root of 100 X minus X squared. So actually, the degree of the denominator wins by 2, which means that we need to do an inverse trig rule. I don't know exactly which inverse trig rule it will turn out to be, but I know that they all have something squared. They all have u squared. So I need to rewrite this x as something squared. Well, the only way to do that would be is if I had x to the 1 half power inside of here. A power raised to a power you multiply, and 1 half times 2 is 1, which would take us back to where we started from. I also went ahead and rewrote the square root of x out in the front as x to the 1 half power. So this does tell me that the u value is going to be x to the 1 half power, which means that u prime will be 1 half x to the negative 1 half power. Substituting u for x to the 1 half power, we have this. But now, instead of dx, we need to write du over u prime, which is 1 half x to the negative 1 half power. If we multiply straight across, we will end up multiplying x to the 1 half power times x to the negative 1 half power. These will cancel each other out. And make a 1. So these will be gone on the next step. What will I do with this 1 half in the denominator? Well, dividing by 1 half is the same as multiplying by 2. So this will end up as a positive 2 out in front of the integral. So now we have 2 times the integral of 1 over the square root of 100 minus u squared du. This is a perfect match for the arcsine rule with an a value of 10. The a value is the square root of the constant. So let's go ahead and use this trig rule to integrate.
Notice that there is no 1 over a in front of this rule. So we go straight into arc sine. u over a. Uh, what was u again? u is x to the 1 half power. So we will write x to the 1 half power over a, which is 10, plus c. Don't forget about the 2 in front of the integral. Putting x to the 1 half power back as a square root gives us the final answer. This is very similar to the last one. It's probably still going to be an inverse trig rule. So let's rewrite this so that instead of an x, we have something squared. But just like on the last problem, if I want to write x as something squared, it will have to be x to the 1 half power. When you raise a power to a power, you multiply. So these will cancel out and get us back to x again. So this tells us that u must be x to the 1 half power, which means that u prime is going to be 1 half x to the negative 1 half power. We can also tell that the a value is going to be 10 because it will be the square root of the constant. Let's make the u substitution. Replacing x to the 1 half power with u we have this, but instead of dx, we must write du over u prime, which is 1 half x to the negative 1 half power. Focus on the x times x to the negative 1 half power. When you multiply with like bases, you add the exponents. So this is x to the 1 power, times x to the negative 1 half power. When you add those exponents, you're going to get the 1 half power. So this will be x to the 1 half power right here. I'm going to come back to that in a second. Now, the 1 half in the denominator will show up as a 2 in the front because dividing by 1 half is the same thing as multiplying by 2. At first, we are worried about this x to the 1 half power because we need to just only have u. There can't be any x's to do the u substitution. But this is okay because, guess what? u equals x to the 1 half power. And that's what we see right here. So we can erase this and put a u instead. This integral is a perfect match for the arc secant rule. So keeping in mind that u is equal to x to the 1 half power and a is equal to 10, let's use the arc secant rule to integrate. So we see 1 over a, so we will write 1 over 10 arc secant of the absolute value of u over a. So that'll be x to the 1 half power, and I'm going to go ahead and write the square root of x over a, which is 10, plus c. Don't forget that we have this 2 sitting out in the front, so that is still here. 2 times 1 tenth is 1 fifth, so this is the final answer. Looking at the denominator of part f, it sort of reminds us of the arc sine rule, but there is no arc sine in the numerator of the rule. So what do we do? Well, let's just do some u substitution. Let's let u equal the numerator. Arc sine x over 10. Well, that means that u prime is going to be the derivative of this. But this is a memorized rule. Back in first semester, we memorized that the derivative of arc sine u is equal to all of this. Don't get confused, this u is not the same as this u that we're doing in the u substitution, of course not. But let's go ahead and find u prime, which is going to be the derivative of this according to the rule. So we will do 1 over the square root of 1 minus x over 10 
squared. And then of course we have to do the chain rule and multiply by the derivative of x over 10. So uh, that's just going to be 1 tenth. To understand what's coming, we need to simplify this expression a bit. First of all, we have x over 10 squared. So I went ahead and squared the x and the 10, which became x squared over 100. So the next thing is interesting. We need to somehow distribute the 10 into the radical. But you cannot multiply a regular number by a radical. It'll just end up sitting out front and doing nothing. So instead, let's rewrite 10 as the square root of 100. All right, that would be the same thing. You can multiply a radical times a radical. So when I multiply these together, the 100 will distribute to both of these. And picture it. When I multiply each of these by 100, it's going to be like I have 100 times 1, and I'm going to have 100 times x squared. So I'm going to end up with 100 for the first term, and this 100 will cancel out the 100 in the denominator. So u prime equals all of this. It's going to be hard to fit all of this into our u substitution, but let's try. So I'm going to have the integral of, in the numerator, we just have u, because u is arc sine of x over 10. So I have u. In the denominator, um, right now I still have this same denominator. It hasn't gone anywhere. So I have the square root of 100 minus x squared. And then instead of dx, we need to write du divided by u prime. But u prime is all of this. Let me change colors to make it more obvious. So here comes the u prime in the denominator. It is 1 over the square root of 100 minus x squared. You can probably see where I'm going with this. We notice that we have the square root of 100 minus x squared in the numerator and in the denominator. So these just cancel each other out. And we end up with the integral of u du. But of course, we simply use the power rule of integration and we do uh, u squared. And then we divide by the new power. So we have 1 half u squared plus c. Remembering that u is arc sine of x over 10, we get this for the final answer.